Good morning, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, EL, EILM and uh, Dr. Bhatia for uh, inviting us for this panel discussion. And uh, today's uh, topic is developing clean HR ecosystem interact responsibility. So this topic is very close to all the HR leaders. We day and night work for achieving uh, to make a clean HR ecosystem and which is starting from the recruitment to the retirement, we try our level best to achieve a clean HR ecosystem. We start with a clear HR policies. I mean clear HR policies when we draft the HR policies and procedures, uh, we try our level best to make it very simple, easy to understand. If the policies are clear, it is easily understood by the employees and the HR team and it can be implemented easily. The other important uh, aspects for uh, uh, this clean HR ecosystem is promoting transparency. The, all the HR practice starting from recruitment, performance management system, whether training and development, all the practice we need to have transparency in the process uh, so that it is very clear to everyone. And other thing which is a new trend in the current scenario is integration of technology with the HR process. Nowadays there are lots of HR softwares are available in the market. We can integrate all the uh, HR process uh, with the uh, technology. There are, we can integrate the recruitment process, performance management, learning and development, payroll, and, and the most advanced thing is the data analytics which is helping us to take any decision at any time and the accuracy. We can do the predictive analysis. There are lots of things. This data analytics having playing a very important role because the decision will be based on data. And other aspects is uh, lead by example. As HR leaders, we have to set example at the HR professional, we have to set examples in the organization to, uh, so that if we lead by example, then it is easy to implement the things, otherwise people will point finger on us where we are not practicing the uh, right policies and procedures. And uh, lastly, I would like to talk about communication. We communicate, we should encourage communication. The HR people should communicate with the employees. So HR people should communicate very clearly with the employees and also we have to encourage a feedback mechanism. In uh, feedback, uh, like recently we had uh, organized a town hall meeting in our organization to set our company's vision clarity uh, by our MD. So we organized it in a platform like uh, Microsoft Teams and around 350 employees participated in that uh, uh, town hall. We got very good suggestions from the people in the bottom level. And when we analyze those uh, these suggestions, then we understand that we, these suggestions can yield lots of value to the process. We are a steel manufacturing company, and uh, which will have a great impact on the EBITDA of the organization. With this note, I, uh, I request uh, Kaustav to say a few words on the topic. Good morning, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. See, Dr. Banerjee, I want to thank you for your keynote address, and you started with the topic mother, and you talked about leadership and the qualities. Definitely, we all, as a human being, we have learned the first learning had come from mother. That is the process, you know. While we'll be talking about this HR topic and the journey, the last thing which I heard from ADP is that we are ready to give you, pay your you know, salary and process it. So in between, we have to earn it. And how do we earn it? That is where we are there to talk about. See, we will talk about sets of processes which are there. And there are, we must as an HR leader, as an individual, we must make a difference. There again, we will come and have a discussion. It is not, it should not be a monologue to my opinion. And of course, there are tools uh, available the predictive tools, as Dr. Banerjee said, which is only 35% right, and the rest 65 is with the bookies. And who are the bookies over here? You all, we are the bookies over here, and we need to take that forward. It is not that we rely all on data, 
you know, what the predictive analysis say. Definitely that will be a guider, but we need to pay attention to what we think, the individualistic thought. He also talked about uh, Karl Marx and all that. Why I am saying this, I have seen a little bit of more world than you people. There are colleagues over here who have also seen uh, world equally to me. Uh, see, 30 years back, I mean, we were young and we came into this profession. We were known as personnel manager or industrial relation manager, where, you know, it, it was, uh, we were known as a subject where uh, we were remembered in crisis and forgotten in peace. If, if <laughs> uh, this, this was the situation, particularly in the factories, but now things have changed. We are there in the board, we are there everywhere, and the HR topic is the topic uh, which is talked in day in and day out. And we are a business enabler now. It is not a function which uh, you need to call and settle the dispute. It is a function where we are there thick and thin of the business. We are facilitating the business. Now, uh, I have my colleagues with me. Uh, with this few words, this is, I'm, I'm trying to set the tone how we will go about. And of course, now we will talk about the process. This is the uh, theme where we have five topics where uh, we will divide ourselves and we will express our views. And of course, we would like you to participate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I request Prashant to save you. A very good morning to everyone. Uh, extremely sorry I was slightly late on the way to Calcutta. Calcutta traffic is, my God experience for the first time. Uh, while coming back to the topic, uh, I'm in this profession for last 27 years. 10 years was in manufacturing and 17 years is in service industry. When you talk about the ecosystem part, it is in fact a network of interconnected different components that comes together, aligns together, and gives a shape to an organization. Normally we say the CEO model, which normally means customer, owner, and uh, employees. Now these all three are interconnected, where the entire ecosystem revolves into it. At being in manufacturing, being in service industry, the core thing which I have learned is, what is your value system? How this value system drives your organization, and that is all about your ecosystem. And what is values? Values are your core belief, which you cherish from your heart. It's just like that when you go to a temple, nobody tells you to open your shoes. It is just there in the subconscious mind. So how do you drive your organization with a certain value system? That matters, and I think that's the all about this session into it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Prashant, to save you. So good morning to all of you. Uh, thank you, Professor Vatia, uh, Professor Banerjee, and all the team here uh, for giving us this opportunity. And it's a very interesting topic. And I'll start with a very uh, old quote, which is there, you know, uh, which uh, some say that Peter Ducker basically said this. He says that, you know, culture eats strategy for breakfast. All right. So at the end of the day, I think it's very important uh, for any organizations to set the right culture. And uh, the HR ecosystem starts with the three very important concepts which are there, basically about purpose, culture, and values. And HR has a very important role to play in basically aligning these three very important aspects which are there in the organization. Uh, as per the David Ulrich model, if you all know about it, and I'm sure you would be studying, I see a lot of students at the back, uh, I think we have come a long way, you know. Uh, we started with an administrative expert as a process to come all the way to cultural change. And today, after the COVID, uh, I think we are at the middle of the cyclone, you know. So a lot of transformation, whatever is required in the organization, HR is playing a very strategic role. And I think going forward, the kind of transformation that is happening uh, in the ecosystem, the business ecosystem, HR has a big role to play. Whether it be right from, uh, you know, the work cultures that are there, 
the changing dynamics in terms of the work, uh, somebody talked about pay, uh, the way in which different kind of uh, demographic uh, people for say that, you know, which are coming and integrating the different uh, stages of people who are going to work together in the same workspaces. Uh, I think there are a lot of work that is going to happen. Having said that, you know, what is the important job of an HR change leader? I think the most important job for an HR change leader is to basically integrate all our processes which are there and make sure that they talk with each other. Many a times, you know, we work in very silos and our working environments are such that, you know, some activities are not talking to the other activities. At the end of the day, I think the important question for all of us to ask is, is our processes and system really adding value to the organization at large and to the business? And if we are able to see that kind of a integration, I think there's a lot that we can add. And today, I think from our own experience, we are going to bring in that aspect and also kind of, you know, put forward these ideas to you so that you can also share from your ideas in terms of saying that how can we as, as HR also be a business partner in the true sense? Thank you. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, next, we will have some questions on uh, this topic. So, I would like to first ask, uh, what is the importance of core value in developing a clean HR ecosystem? Uh, as I said right now, that the core values is actually the main thing. Is your belief that what do you, what do you want your organization to do? What do you want your people to do? It is a belief system that it should have been there. Like one of the belief system that we have is that problems are with systems, not with people. And it is the people who's going to improve the system. So that's the core um, belief. And when the core belief is there, then only the entire ecosystem of the entire organization comes to into one umbrella. Thank you. Let me just add into that. Uh, so, you know, in organizations, I, I think we are very focused on the what part of it, you know, what is it that we are supposed to do. Uh, but many a times, I think we miss out on the how part of it, how we are supposed to do it. And I think the core values basically focuses on the how part of it. It is a belief of an organization to see that whenever we have value dilemmas which are coming up, uh, right, what would be our Bible to refer to when we are going to take those decisions? And be rest assured in organization context today, I think there are a lot of gray areas where we need to operate on. So if you have to operate in that area, what is the, you know, the callback that we are going to have to basically look at what do we value as an organization? You want to add something? I, I want to supplement. Whatever we do, at the end, we must be humane. Uh, the approach should be humane and where the people becomes, you know, where they are affected. So our actions on this area should be like whatever we do, you know, ultimately whatever action we take, it should be very human one. And we need to carry them, you know, and implement it. This is how uh, we'll get interconnected with the processes over there. Whatever we do, whatever action, action we take, we must be very humane, to my opinion. Thank you, Kausa. The next question I would like to ask is, how a clean HR ecosystem will help to develop a great work culture? Well, uh, this is the plethora of processes, you know, they are all interconnected, whether uh, we talk about entitlements, like if we are hired, then we are entitled to something. So those processes are written down, it is written down by us, uh, you know, by mainly HR department. And then the most important thing, like we need to review it, you know. What we write it today, it becomes irrelevant tomorrow. So there must be a periodic review and that review must be, you know, you know, opinion must be taken across, you know, across the level. If, see, I am from manufacturing company and uh, I am to say, if I am in a factory, I have a different set of culture. And if I am in a head office, there is a different set of culture. But I am the same person. I, I, I need to deliver over there and I need to deliver over here. It's a very tricky situation. So uh, I'm not saying that uh, the values are changing, but you know, the, the ways of handling are changing over there. The central theme is, you know, kept intact, but we have a different set sets of, uh, you know, rules, regulations, and even policies, you know, at the factory level different and then the head office level or the corporate level that is different. 
Now we as a champion uh, must be able to understand and be able to implement and able to review periodically and then you know express it. And we, this is not, it should not be hidden. There are uh, means, there are, uh, you know, uh, today we have tools, we have webs, we have uh, websites where you can publish that. And also you can have communication sessions, be transparent. Uh, what kills the organization, even if you try to do a better thing and if you hide it, you know, that uh, gives, uh, you know, what to say, people will think otherwise. Uh, they talk about uh, things, you know, they talk negative. Though you are actually trying to do something positive, but this transparency piece, if you are not handling it very carefully, it becomes a counterproductive. Whatever policies, themes which you bring in, that becomes, uh, you know, utterly failure. And it becomes a failure at the end of the day and boards ask you that such a good policy, we are thinking of the people, but ultimately this is not paying off. So we must be careful on, you know, how to handle it and how to, you know, kind of share it at the ground level. This is uh, my thought. Thank you, Kaustav. And you would like to ask? Uh, in, ad <coughs> in addition to what you have said, you just mentioned about how important is communication in a company. Anything, everything needs to be communicated right down. And that is where your transparency actually comes. Second most important thing is how unbiased you are with all your HR functions, whether it is human resource planning, performance management system, wage and salary, learning and development, and how much space we have given to a workman or an employee to understand that this is actually my job. In other words, uh, I would say that, uh, mm, have you really empowered your employees? Have you given them that authority, that delegation, that accountability? so and so that he feels that this job belongs to me. My job counts for something. I have a say on my job. So that's why I say the entire ecosystem will have a very transparent culture. Yeah, uh, adding to this, uh, I would al also like to say something. See, HR play a very important role in developing a great culture. Uh, the companies like Tata's, Infosys, they are run by the culture, basically. It is known by any individual. The culture is running the organization and they are in the market for a long time. So I feel uh, two things. Uh, HR policies uh, is actually a document of an organization's intent. You know, what does it look like uh, from, a, from a perspective of one compliance? Uh, what does it want to do? What does it does not want to do? Also from a welfare perspective, what is it looking at it? and also whether those policies are really futuristic in terms of capturing those things which could come in the near future. So very important for HR professionals to be able to look at uh, HR policies from the context of all of these three lenses because unless and until you look at it from all of this, you know, you are having different sets of people working with you. You have got a very young generations which are coming into the organizations and you have got uh, fairly aged people who are there. It is, is it inclusive of their needs of both the set of people who are there in the organization. At the end of the day, it is also very important for us to understand whether it is creating a win-win situation for us, where a policy is very favorable to an employee, but it may be detrimental for, an, for a business, right? But we need to see, we draw a kind of a middle line where, you know, business also benefits at the same time, I think the employee also benefits. Both those dynamics, I think, is HR has a big role to play in terms of navigating into those, both those aspects which are there. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my next question is similar to that, what you said. How important is the clear HR policy in making a, a clean HR ecosystem? Well, uh, we s spoke a little while ago, like uh, clean uh, is a relative term, you know. It depends on the organization to organization, how, what is a clean, what does a clean mean? But anyway, uh, not going into controversy, it is you have, we have to operate within set of parameters, certain law, certain uh, human aspect and that is how we represent in a most truest way of a policy and that, that becomes a clean to my opinion. And there are host of uh, ways how you can actually develop that and then implement it. Uh, at the end of the day, 
you have to see that whatever we have written down in the policy, whether it is serving his true purpose or not. Uh, let me give you an example. Like um, very recently, we have stepped into an era of ESG. You must have heard this term, uh, um, uh, this environment social governance. Now, uh, this is a very new term where all the companies are trying to, you know, share data, build up data. Where do you get this data from? It is already there. This is the new way of, you know, representing it. And there are uh, many critical factors which we do not measure and we do not write even on that. And how, if we don't write and if we don't know, how, how do you develop a policy? But now on this ESG part, very recently, uh, you know, there are models which have come up and uh, companies are trying to, you know, uh, publish it. And now it, it, it is become, uh, by the company act, it will become uh, certain, you know, you have to do it mandatory. So there are reports available in a free market. You can see what is the ESG score. That is also there. You can see for yourself and you try to improve on that. This is the most recent one I wanted to share with you. But uh, there, you know, again, that transparency comes in and uh, your organization is known by and seen and judged by the data you are presenting in this piece. I think this is, uh, this ESG part will give a picture how our organization or an individual organization is look like. And you know, by this, the, you know, the finances, the people who are going to finance our business or not, will much depend on this. This is a, a piece which is, I think, is very important, which is coming to our life. Thank you. You want to? Yeah, so I think uh, clean is a very cliche word in today's context, you know, and everywhere we are talking about, you know, going clean. Uh, but I think in HR parlance, we have to be very sure about one very important aspect is in terms of saying that, you know, when we're talking about HR, it is very contextual, you know, because if you look at HR per se, then, you know, in any organization is very generic. Every organization would have, you know, similar kind of policies. And yet, in some way or another, they are very different looking at the kind of ecosystem in which uh, an organization operates in. A mining organization would be totally different from, might be, a BFSI sector where I belong to, and it will be totally different from a manufacturing sector. So I think the context uh, matters a lot in terms of uh, how we are looking at HR policies and processes. Uh, but at the same time, I think it is very important uh, that we also understand the fact that, you know, what set of people are basically operating in our kind of a business which is there, right? And are we able to really communicate to them the right kind of a messages that we want to give? As I said, the intent part of it. Right? And are they appreciating and valuing those information being shared with them? I think that's for me is a clean way of looking at uh, HR policies. Thank you. I just want to add with him that uh, any HR policy to be relevant needs to be reviewed every year in order to keep it in best with the coming generation. See, any HR policy has got one major objective. First is your, how you are engaging your employees. And the second is your retention part. Are your employees being retained or not? So any HR policy to be more progressive needs to be reviewed every year. And it has to be seen that how, do, how does an employee like to work? Yeah, uh, this is the last question. How important is transparency in building a clean HR ecosystem? Uh, transparency is the must. You have to be open. You have to tell people what is required. You have to say yes to yes, you have to say no to no. So and so that all the employees are in the same car. They know that what is the system, what is the policy. I can go this way, I cannot go that way. That keeps you invited this together. Thank you. Transparency is extremely important irrespective of whether it is HR policy or otherwise uh, at an organization level. But again, you know, transparency to what level? Uh, right, and I think that's a decision that organizations needs to take, uh, looking at it from a perspective of saying that what is it that an individual at a certain level is supposed to know, uh, at a people at a, you know, a junior level, at a people at a mid-level, people at a senior level, what are the kind of information that flows to them, is it relevant for them and is it important for them to know, I think that's the way in which we need to define uh, transparency. 
transparency does not mean that you know I can go to a CEO and ask him what is his salary and he's willing to come over and you know kind of uh, disclose that also right so I think we need to be very clear about understanding what transparency really means uh, what information I require to operate my job or to do that job am I being provided that information by the organization to do that I think that for me is transparency and this is very important transparency and the levels must be set yes board level transparency is something different what we mean middle level uh, we mean something different and the workers level we mean something different it is not hiding but it is the way how people will manage will be able to digest that so whether they will be seeing that information with the right perspective business perspective that is is important so these there are three four levels and i think the transparency must be you know set by the board or by the hr people uh, in in such a manner that it becomes relevant to those group of people that is what uh, my take and i wanted to say thank you yeah uh, adding to this transparency in the hr uh, process starting from the recruitment uh, pms uh, and uh, reward and recognition how decisions are taken and why the decisions are taken so that transparency should be there so that nobody will ask question to the hr uh, the decision which HR or the, the process which HR is doing anything wrong. Uh, with this, uh, we are uh, uh, coming to the last part that is the question answer. Anybody have to answer, the, I mean, ask any question, please. Yeah, I think uh, we, we must get some questions to answer uh, because we have been, you know, saying it from our side, but uh, we need to interact and, you know, that is how we share our views and learn. Not only you, me also, we, we also learn. So can, I, can we have some questions? That would be very, very encouraging. Then how important is the role of the HR to make them in a common path so that they can follow the organization ethos, ethos and belief system? Yeah. Uh, the most important thing, people are coming with the different values. We, the, the, it is the role of the HR to integrate the values of the people with the company's core values. Every company has certain core values and based on those core values, companies are taking decisions and their vision is aligned with those core values. So it is the job of the HR to align the individual values with the company's uh, core value. The fundamental is that how strong is your learning and development department? How important is your uh, induction where you actually, when an employee joins, you share your core values with them? That's more important. Uh, I have a slightly different view. Uh, so I think we need to be very clear about our personal values and organizational values. Uh, so we may have a lot of things which we as individuals uh, value a lot. Uh, but for an organization to look at that, uh, contextually is, you know, organization is also as an entity personified as a human being looking at his own value systems. So I think for us important is, uh, you know, when we are working or we would like to work in any organization, we should definitely look into their value statements which are there and for a moment, you know, just kind of try to align ourselves and say, is this something which I value? For that matter, you know, I've got a lot of my colleagues who says that I would not like to work in an organization which uh, manufactures liquor or, uh, you know, which manufactures cigarettes for that matter. Now, nothing wrong in that we have got one of the biggest, largest conglomerate which does that, right? I don't want to name them, but having said that, but, you know, they would also have a separate value system which is there. So it is about your personal value uh, getting aligned to the organization values and you taking a choice in terms of saying whether you would like to operate or not. From an organizational point, point of view, uh, it is for the organizations to keep imparting and telling and making people aware what is the narrative that they have against this value system and telling them why it is important for them, you know, and what is it that they are, uh, they are trying to say and communicate to the employees at large. Thank, Thank you. you. Only a little bit of supplement over here. While you narrate this, I think the best time to narrate this is during an induction when a new joinee comes in. There, you have him there, and, and that is a fresh mind. And he is 100 times receptive at that point of time. There, you can have shared that part, organization point of view, in a form of booklet, whatever it is, on electronic media. And 
share all your information, particularly on the value system. Uh, I think uh, that will be, you know, uh, taking you a long way. And then intermittently you can, uh, you know, you know, do a refresher course or, you know, question answer session, have a team meet or a town hall session where you can, you know, you know, build on that. That is my, you know, suggestion. Thank you. Thank you.